you're going into your sixth year in the NBA. Yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, blessed. Feel mm -hmm. blessed. Feel good. Um, can never take it for granted. So um, just to be able to say, I, you know, thus far I played six years in the NBA, it's, it's been a blessing. So I'm excited for the year. What do you love most about this city? I say the food for one. Okay. The food. And I always talk about the fans because uh, I genuinely love basketball, so the fans, I feel like they genuinely love sports. Like yes. you go to They're some, big sports fans yeah, here. Yeah, like you go to some other cities and like you play in some other arenas and sometimes you just you can just tell that fans are there for like as entertainment and mm -hmm. not because of the game or the sporting event. Uh, so for me, just going to the Bears game, going to the White Sox or the Cubs or coming to, you know, obviously our games, like yeah. the fans really care. That's why sometimes when you're not playing as well, you know that they're upset. But that shows that they really care. Like they want, they want you to compete and they want you to play hard because they care. So I think that's the best part about being here and playing here. What has it been like, aside from the sports aspect um, in this city, what has it been like getting to know Chicago in general? Uh, it's been dope. It's definitely been a lot. It's a lot different from, from the city I grew up in and where mm -hmm. I'm from, because I'm from North Carolina. So it's like yeah. more country and, and woods and land and stuff. So like for me, it was an adjustment when I first got here, but I, I can say that um, it has really grown on me. Um, it's, it's a dope place. Um, a lot of people, obviously a lot of my friends come and mm -hmm. I'm excited to show them the city. I'm excited to show them everything because it's never not something to do here. Like it's yeah. always something to do. You can always get into something. So that's probably the best part is that it's just, it's always going, it never stops. When did Chicago start to feel like home to you then? To, for me, it started to feel like home. I think after, honestly, I'm going to my six. After my third year, like I said, just reflecting. After my third year, I grew up a lot, just reflecting and maturing and stuff, and realizing like it's a blessing to be here, especially playing for the Chicago Bulls. That's yeah. kind of how I looked at it. When you hear the Bulls intro song, the starting lineup, and your <laughs> name called, is that like has to be one of the coolest things ever? Does that ever get old to nah, you? No, nah, no, nah, the From North Carolina, six five guard, that never gets old. It, you're always like, like I always say it's a blessing, but you know, for me to represent North Carolina, represent my hometown and where I'm from, um, all the way in, in Chicago, a big city, and, and playing for the Chicago Bulls, everybody knows it. This is a historic organization, so it never gets old. When you look back on your rookie year, getting drafted back in 2019, seventh overall, if you could tell that Kobe White something, what would you tell him? I'd tell him that just, just be patient, be patient, everything, it's not going to come as fast as you want it to, and, and trust God's time. I think my rookie year, um, coming from the year I had at Carolina, obviously getting drafted here, I kind of, you know, just thought everything was supposed to happen for me like that. Um, my first year, and then it, it, it lingered over to my second year and to my third year, and then obviously adversity hits when I get I hurt my shoulder and. You know, and they, they get Zoe, they got Zoe, they got Alex, they got Debo, they, you know what I'm saying? So like, they dropped the IO. So for me, it was like, just be patient. Like your time gonna come, but but stay disciplined to the work too. How have you been able to stay yourself? Because I feel like when I see you on the court and just hearing guys talk about you, at media day, there are so many questions about you, but the thing we heard most was there's so much joy to you. And there's also that natural leadership role as well. But when it comes to having that joy, where does that come from? I think just my family. Um, just growing up, I'm real family oriented, and that's kind of how I grew up. Like, I was always a joyful guy. Um, I was always that, but I think, like, my sister is very joyful, my brother is, my mom is, um, my dad was. So, like, it just kind of was like, you know, I've been this way since I was a kid. Like, I always love to laugh, I always love to joke around. Um, I just look at life like you only get one shot at it, so, and I feel like, the best emotion for me when I feel best is when I'm laughing and joking and being joyous. So, uh, like I always like, you can choose joy. Like you yeah. can choose to have joy. You can't, you know, happiness and all that. That's a that's a fleeting feeling. Like that's just the feeling that comes. You can choose to have joy every single day. How do you keep that in mind though, especially when times do get hard from the in adversity as well? Mm -hmm. I think just sticking to my faith. Um, praying, talking to the Lord, doing the things necessary to have a clear mind, whether that's be meditation, going for a walk, whatever it may be, listening to music, um, just realizing what my outlets are other than basketball, uh, and then partaking in that, going to the movie theater. I think that's how you kind of get, that's how I, I calm myself down, get a level head, and try to put things in perspective. I know you're a North Carolina kid at heart. What was growing up like for you in North Carolina? 
I was fun. Like I said, I grew up in a small town. Uh, I grew up in like a, a trailer park area. So, but the best thing about it was that like we, none of us like had a lot of money. Like we was okay. facing poverty, but mm -hmm. it made you super close. Like it made the community real close. Like in my neighborhood, there was a lot of kids my age. We go outside and play every day. So uh, it was fun for me. Uh, like I grew up in a small town and it was like everybody knew each other. So okay. everybody knew one another, you know, it wasn't much to do. So the gym was always packed. So we was always hooping. So um, I, I, I love where I grew up at. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Going from a kid who's from the small town to now being in such a big city and living this kind of dream, did you ever think that something like this was possible? No, nah, I, no, nah, I didn't. Um, I never even, I never thought about the NBA until I, until I got to college, so. At UNC? Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. so, I, I, I remember I remember my trainer, who's like my big bro, my big brother, but mm -hmm. he was my trainer. Um, he used to tell me like, I got a chance, I got a chance, like you got everything you need. And I was just like, I mean, it's one in a, I, I, I'm, I'm over realist, so like it was, it's one in a million, like that mm -hmm. you get drafted to the NBA. Like, did I have dreams of getting my name call, called on draft night, walking across that stage, of course. But I think for me, when I was, especially when I was younger, I just wanted to go to school for free, because I knew, all the investment that my parents had, had gave me at the game of basketball, gave my brother. So uh, for me, it was just, I wanted to go to school for free. They won't have to pay for it. It just so happened I got good enough to go to Carolina. I got to Carolina, everybody said, scouts, everybody said I would be a, a guy that would be there multiple years and then maybe have a shot to go. Um, I got there and I think, yeah, like I just started playing pickup and I was like, man, like, I'm kind of good. <laughs> Then I started playing games, and I was like, <laughs> I, I might got a shot. And then uh -huh. I woke up one day, and, and somebody told me congrats. And I was like, for what? And it was like, you're like top 10 on the draft board. And so that's how it kind of happened. What, so throughout your time here in Chicago with the Bulls, where do you think you've experienced the most growth off the court first? I think matur maturity-wise, I think mental health for me. Okay. Mental health, because like I said, like growing up in a small town, that's not really something you talk about. Mm. So I think, how can I say? Okay, so like the first time, every time that something has happened in my life, I always use basketball as the escape. Like the outlet. The outlet. Yeah. So it's always been basketball. Like, and I think that's what a lot of younger players that come into the league struggle with. So okay. every time, you always been a man on your team. You always right. been that guy. In your city, you was that guy, you know? Knowing that now, and then of course seeing the year that you had last year, you mm -hmm. took a massive leap, especially when you look at things statistically from the scoring, number of assists, even mm -hmm. the total minutes you played as well. Um, first off, when you look back on last season, how do you put into words the season that you had? Put into words, I would say it was a lot of growth. A lot of growth. I think for me it was a lot of growth going through stuff that I had never been through. Like obviously I had a really great year but I was put in moments where that I wasn't used to. I was, like okay. I said. Um, what was the moment from last year that? Just multiple moments. Just okay. being being a guy at the end of a game that, that has the ball, playing 30, 39, I don't know how many minutes I played, like 30, 38 minutes. Yeah. So for me, a lot of, I had a great year. I'm not saying that I didn't. Right. Like I, 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 you know, I give, give <laughs> my boy LD always say, give yourself some grace. Yeah. I had a, a good, a great year, but I think that I learned a lot from that and I think that's the biggest thing that I took away like all right I'm at this level now what do I have to do to do it on a nightly basis what do I have to how do how do you build off of that how do I yeah. build off of it Flicking on the year like I always say look at yourself in the mirror and say last year I was poorly conditioned I wasn't ready to play 38 minutes so this year getting to get in the gym one thing that I needed to work on was was being better in shape more conditioned so I can play on both sides of the ball at a at an elite rate and and still while playing 35 minutes mm -hmm. be honest were you kind of bummed that you didn't get most improved player award? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I was a bum. Okay. I, I wouldn't say I was bummed. I, I would, cause, cause I think, well, a lot of people say like you should have won it. I'm like, Max, he deserved it. Like, okay. like he deserved it. Like, he had I think like four, three or four 50 point games last year mm -hmm. for yeah. Philly. You know, and B was out a lot last year, and, and he was he the shouldered a lot he was of the that. guy. Like yeah. he was the guy, and, it, and then. I remember watching him play Utah. He had that game. He, he had 50. I was watching it live when he had 50 against Utah. And like, what he did in the playoffs, like, mm -hmm. in that in that New York series, like, yep. you know, like, 
you, you always you gotta give your hat off. You got know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got it is what it is. Like like I say, like I take stuff for what it is. Like okay. at the end of the day, like I lost. Like I didn't win it. Cool. It's like I it's it's whatever. Like when you hear like your teammates, uh, especially at Media Day, just talking about the leadership skill that you have, have you kind of embraced that a lot more? What do you think of when you hear them talk about you like that? I mean, it, it, it's obviously a great feeling to know your mm -hmm. teammates, you know, respect trust you, you, trust me, respect me in that way. And, and the best part about it is whenever guys like Voo, Zach, like older guys, like, yeah. you know, I'm only 24. Those guys are like, got kids and married. So it's like, they're like, that. they, they, they trust in me to, to, to be a leader and they respect me enough to call me a leader. So. Like, and all the stuff that they've seen in their career, like Tory, like all the stuff that, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's a, it's a great feeling. It's, it's a blessing. Like I always say, you, you, you can't take take that for granted at, at this stage of my career. Uh, you talked about this off season, kind of focusing more on strength and conditioning. What did you really do to prepare you for this upcoming season? I think like, I, I think just conditioning wise, putting yourself in that, in that, in that zone where you're very uncomfortable if you know what I mean, like where, I, like where it's like you can't really breathe, but you just keep going. Like the trainers told me, like in order to get in the shape you want to get in, you're gonna have to make yourself uncomfortable. And I didn't really know what I mean by that at first, but once I was in it, and I'm like, bro, I can't breathe. Like we gotta, like I can't breathe. And he like, this is what I mean by you gotta make yourself uncomfortable because you gotta push through. Now you gotta break barriers. Now you gotta. That's the only way you can really become well conditioned. It's like. Mm -hmm in those moments where you're tired and you think, you are human, you get those those thoughts, like, maybe I should just stop, bro. Like, my leg's giving up, maybe I should mm -hmm. just stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't I can't breathe right now. Like, cause they have a, I was training in a high altitude room. So like, basically okay. it's you in the mountains in yeah. a room, like the, the air is, 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 is in, at a high supply. So mm -hmm. like, stuff like that, doing doing conditioning in, in the hot yoga room on the on an assault bike. Like, mm -hmm. it's just stuff like that, it's just like, so for me, I had to just learn how to push through whenever I'm, I'm that fatigued. It seemed like last year, you just got more confident, especially with the ball in your hand. I mean, did how much of did last year play a role in helping you maybe have that belief within yourself too? I think everybody say like, like last year, I think what really helped me was the second half of my fourth year. Okay. Um, the second half of my fourth year was when I kind of got a lot of confidence after All-Star, like going into All-Star break after All-Star break, um, I started, Having the coach was trusting me a little more with the ball in my hands, um, making decisions. Um, and then from there, I kind of just gained confidence, gained confidence, gained confidence. And then, like I always say, like going into my fifth year, coach mm -hmm. came to visit me during the summer. And he basically said, like, I believe in you. You, you, you can be an elite guard in this league. And that kind of what really like pushed me over the top, just knowing that he had my back and, and the belief that he had in me at that point. Like that's what really gave me the confidence to go out there and do what I did mm -hmm. um, this uh, this past season. I know you love to learn from everyone. <laughs> um, I know Chris Paul is one of your mentors, but just talk about the guys that you have in your corner from Demar, um, Chris Paul as well, AC as well. What have you learned from those guys? I mean, I, I learned so many different things from those guys because they're all different people, right. and they're all different players. Mm -hmm. So I think. You know, Chris have, has always been in my corner since I was 15, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Like, he's one of the, the most genuine dudes I've ever met in the point of, you know, you got guys who got AU teams that support mm -hmm. their AU teams, but like Chris is so active in his AU teams. Like, yeah. he coached me my 16s and 17s. He, whenever the off season came, he would come coaches. Whenever he got time, he would come coaches. He gave me his, when I got selected to play with him, he gave me his number. He reached out to me. Oh. Like, you know, I'm here if you ever need anything. Like, so that's kind of how it started. So he's always, like I, I was telling somebody the other day, um, yesterday, on media day, you know, most people, they'll send you a message and they'd be like, all your, the people you play with, people you cool with, it'd be a copy, it could be a copy and paste message, like, good luck this season. Yeah. Chris sent me a, sends me a voice message. So he has sent me a voice message on iMessage saying, good luck, you know, hope you have it going into your sixth year, like, you getting old, like, Little stuff like mm -hmm. I'm praying you have a healthy season, peace and love to your family, like, and that go a long way because he could have easily just sent every like sent right. me up like typed up a message like, but that, by him doing that lets me know like he really thought about it, really was like 
wanted to read. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's little stuff it's like that. It's genuine. It's too. genuine. Yeah, because yeah. that takes time and effort to yeah. send that to someone. Yeah, and then like like when it comes to Debo, I just he's obviously a terrific player. Like he's one of the oh. greatest. But I I learned a lot from him uh, off the court. Just how he carried himself. Yeah. You know, when he first got here, he was really quiet. He didn't talk mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I talk a lot, so I troll a lot. So uh, at first. You know, he was quiet, so I kind of kept my distance. I didn't really want to, you know what I'm saying? Bother him. Yeah, and also, like, he's one of those guys, like, he DeMar DeRozan, he's a star. Like, so it's like, I'm going to just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah so, uh, but the more I got to know him, I learned a lot from him, like, how he carried himself as a man, mm -hmm. you know, a dad, uh, routine-wise, recovery, his love for the game, his love for being a father. Like, so, his how mental health was important to him. Mm -hmm. So I would say with, with DeMar, I learned a lot from him off the court, how to be a professional, how to how to be a pro. Um, like I always say, the one thing that always stood out to me was he would, he's a whatever, nine-time All-Star, whatever he mm -hmm. is, and he's almost first to every meeting we had, first to the bus, he was never late. Mm -hmm. Like he was a guy that you, you always knew was gonna be there on time, like on and off the court. So um, I kind of learned a lot from him off the court and, how, and, and you know, just being there. Like, so I always say, like, I'm blessed to have that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then with AC, I just learned really from him off the court, but like his leadership. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I learned. Cause one thing that he challenged me to that I always talk to him about is in moments in the game where it's chaotic and, you know, adversity's hitting, emotions are up and down, everybody's emotional. He was always a guy that put us back in perspective of, hey, we're only down five points. We got a lot of time. Like we're, you know, th that type of, and he was always that guy to be level-headed, like calm, like mm -hmm. would say the right thing. So for me, obviously I'm an emotional guy. So mm -hmm. sometimes I can get high and I can get low during yeah. games and being a leader, you can't really have that because they looking for you to be a leader and looking for you to for guidance. Stability. Yeah, yeah so, so. For him, I always picked his brain on and just watching him of how he approached that, like how he approached that. And so and he challenged me, that's the one thing that he always said, like, you gotta become. But he said, and it's tough because it took him, he said it took him so a long time to learn it too. Like learn how to put his emotions to the side and say what's better, what's best for the team right now. Mm -hmm. He said, I might be mad, I might be upset, but I can't show it because y'all, like I was one of the leaders, so I look, y'all look for me for guidance. So. I think I learned a lot differently, like a lot of different things from all three of those guys. What was that conversation with Damar like when it came to mental health? I think for me, too? I was just asking, like not asking questions, but it kind of just came up and he was like, that's how we first started to connect okay. because he talked about basketball always being his escape. And so mm -hmm. that's when I was like, that was all my, he said all his, off the, all, all his mental health and stuff came a lot off the court. It's stuff he experienced growing up as a kid mm -hmm. in Compton stuff you know i'm just like losing his father during during um covid and all that so for me all, that's how i was losing my dad like where i grew up growing up in poverty like a lot of my stuff came from off the court and so how he navigated that how he you know what i'm saying what what he do to do you so you know like control his emotions what he do to mm -hmm. not to lash out and you know he always said he, he came a long way because uh, mm -hmm. the DeMar I see is so mellow, so calm, so chill. Yeah. Always in the present, always in the moment. But he he, he told me he was he wasn't always like that. He said it took it, work. It, to it get took there. work. He said it yeah. took work to to control my emotions, control my anger, control. He said it took a lot of work to get here. So for me, uh, obviously after that, like I said, I kind of just started working on myself and figuring out what I can do. Like I said, after that third year, because I think my third year was with him. Yeah. So I kind of started working on myself. Looking at goals then for this upcoming season, what are some of your goals? I think just to build on build on last season. Okay. Obviously, build on last season. I think think team team wise, win it win take it one day at a time, but win. I think win. I think we got a lot of uh, great guys in our locker room. Like I was high character guys that play the game for the right reasons, that play the right way, and we got a lot of competitors in the, in, in our locker room. And I think. We got a chance to really surprise a lot of people, and like they they they're counting us out now. But um, you know that's what comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's on us to, to prove them wrong. Like it starts with us. Mm -hmm. um, I think myself building off last year, um, but also you know becoming that all star caliber guard. Mm -hmm. You know okay. I think that's kind of like the next steps for me is is moving towards that direction. 
When you look at like going into the season, guys know who you are. So teams will start to game plan for you more, mm -hmm. of course, now. But how do you continue to evolve your game and give yourself that edge against teams? I think continue to be who I am. Like I said, I, that's one of the things that I had learned last year and dealt with. Um, just teams started to 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 game plan for me, to take away certain stuff that that, that I, I like to get to. But that also comes with player development. I think work takes away all of that. Like working on your game, truly working on your game every day takes away all of that. Um, also reflection, looking in the mirror, like I always say, and, and telling yourself like, when they took away this, I couldn't do this. Okay. When they forced me left, it was hard for me to make plays, like whatever it may be. Uh -huh. And then the summer, you really attack that. You work at it, you work on all your deficiencies, and then you let the work show during the season. And then it, control what you can control. Like mm -hmm. it, after the season or during the season, I can still look back and say, you know, I, get, I put my, 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 my foot forward every day and I worked on it. Mm -hmm. And I got to go back to the lab and work on it some more. So that's kind of how I see it. A lot of good guards on this roster. How have you been able to thrive in multiple roles? I think just, just being putting the team first. I think I've always been a guy, like a team first guy. I think like just putting the team first, first and doing whatever needs to be done um, in order for us to win. Um, if winning is the most important thing to you, then that it's easy to thrive in, in, in different roles. Yeah, obviously, it's a challenge. It, it's something you got to get used to. But if winning is truly, truly first, then you you will figure it out. My last question for you: What are you looking forward to most this this season? I think just getting out there with the guys again, playing the new faces, um, being back at the United Center. Um, I think in a different role. Obviously, I'm excited about the, the different role I'm going into into the season with. But um, I think it's just like you know, we got we got Giddy, we got Zoe coming back, and that's one of the most blessed things that we could have going on right now is that seeing him back on the court after everything he's been through. Um, Zach's coming in fresh. Um, obviously, my boy Pat got paid, mm -hmm. resigned. So with the guys, Modest coming in, young athletic guy. Um, with the guys we got coming, Sticks, Jalen, well, Jalen Smith, y'all might not know him as Sticks, but Jalen Smith. So it's like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's gonna be a fun year. You know, you just look forward to it. And it, it's always a blessing to, to play in the NBA. Um, so anytime you're stepping on that court and being healthy and being able to play, you never take that shit. <laughs> that moment, the moments for granted.